guys. Well, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, 2020, right? Here we have it. Let me uh, let me get you what you need so you can call it a wrap. We'll take our first question from Keith Sargent, NJ.com. Greg, we saw you uh, tearing up after after the game. You seem pretty emotional now. What's going through your uh, What was going through your mind after you, uh, you won that game? Well, I was so, you know, when we started this week, this was a really fatigued team, and I don't just mean physically fatigued, although they are seven, you know, seven weeks straight, but emotionally, not seeing their families and. You know, like our whole country is experiencing right now as things get worse and worse you know there's fear and uh we actually had three of our players um lose loved ones this week you know two of them to covid two of the players um so it's been a tough week for all these kids and uh they really came out and just they did exactly what we asked them to do. Just keep fighting. I can't tell you how this is going to go. Uh, my hat's off to Maryland. I mean, what an incredible job they did, you know, with all those people out, you know, coaches out, players out, and that happened late in the week, so it's not like you had time to plan for it. Um, so my hat's off to them. They did, a, they did a really good job. But I'm proud of our guys. They just uh, – <clears throat> they believe in each other. They play for each other. They love each other, and they, they – that's what fuels their their passion to play for each other. So that's probably what it was. Chris Eisner with Gannett. Greg, how is uh, how is Noah? And um, what did you think about the way that Art came in there and, and kind of helped to get things going and obviously do what you guys needed from him today? Well, Noah, you know, obviously he couldn't return. So I don't know. You know, you never know what it's going to be like in a day. But I was really... Uh, I was proud of Art the way he came in, um, and he did a he did really a, a a good job. He ran the offense, he threw the ball well, he ran the ball well, so uh, he led us to victory. So when you're the quarterback who does that in an overtime game to get us to overtime and then to win the game, it's a, a really good job. All his teammates helped him. Obviously, that's that's all we kept saying. You know, this week it was going to take every single guy on this trip for us to be able to win the game. And, you know, when you look at Joe Lasardi, a freshman walk-on is out there playing safety and did a heck of a job, um, you know, at the end. I mean, that's that to me is what you call, you know, a family. Just guys sucking it up for each other. So I, uh, I'm i really proud of them. We're going to go to Steve Politi, NJ.com. Hey, Greg, from afar at least, it seemed like there were some – Dirty or even or certainly borderline plays by Maryland in that game. I'm just curious if you were concerned with with, with some of those hits, uh, especially the one on Vedral that that knocked him out. Yeah, you know when you're down there, it's it's a war zone. I don't know, but I was just so proud of the way our guys just kept swinging. They refused to let anything. I mean, you know, there was times I'm, I don't know how many I don't know if I've ever been out on the field as many times as I was today with kids that w were down. You know, but. They'd go down, they'd come back. You know, the trainers tell me where we're where we are. Hey, he's this, he's that, and then all of a sudden he's back playing, and uh, he being uh, several guys. So I just really proud of our guys that they fought through a lot of things today. Um, and this whole week has been, I think, ends up being a really good life lesson for our entire football team. I'm gonna go to Bobby Darren, twenty four seven. Greg, uh, you had Valentino kick those two field goals after missing the short one. Uh, just talk about the confidence in him. It's kind of a unique story where he came from with the soccer stuff and uh, j just what you were telling him after he missed that kick, too. Well, he is a very talented kicker. You're right. He's got a very explosive leg. Um, he, he and I have a unique relationship. You know, we, we don't – we tell it like it is. So, uh, you know, when he missed the, fir the first one, I told him why I thought he missed it. But he short corrected it. And, uh, you know, they were all three good hits, you know, just the one, the one kind of, kind of pulled on him, but, uh, I'm really proud of him too. Right. I mean, here's a guy that 
during COVID calls me and wants to, I don't know, it was May or whatever it was during the quarantine, he calls me and wants to come out for the team. I said, sure, you can come out for the team as long as your soccer coach is okay with it. And uh, we checked with the coach and he was okay with it. So little did I know he'd be our starting kicker and our place kicker. So it's, uh, like you said, Bobby, it's a good story. You ready to go to Chris Nowalski with Rivals? Hey, Coach, kind of sticking with uh, Valentino, uh, with the kicking late in the fourth quarter, how tough was that with, with time running down and the whole operation had to get out there and, and make the kick, too? Well, we practiced that, right? We wanted to make sure that not only did we get the kickoff, but we didn't want to leave them any time. We didn't want to have to kick the ball off. We didn't want to have to deal with all that. So I thought the entire unit did a very good job. Um, we, we ran out there. We let the clock go down to where we tell them, and then we snapped the ball, and they kicked it. Now, we practice that a lot, so, you know, every week. So uh, I'm glad they executed it. We certainly needed it. We'll take a couple more questions. Next one, James Cratch, NJ.com. Greg, I know you mentioned that a couple of players lost loved ones. I mean, is there any more you can tell us about that? And I guess what was your message to them and to the team as a whole? It sounds like it was a pretty grueling week. Yeah, I'm not comfortable. You know, that's their business, uh, Cratch, and I hope you can appreciate that. But, um, you know, as a head coach in college, you're, you're a father to a lot of kids, and parents entrust you with their sons. And a lot of these guys – most of them I didn't recruit and I've done my best to get to know their parents. Um, but that's not easy either. Right. So, but as a head coach, that's something that I see as my responsibility. And when kids are hurting, you know, just like my own kids, when, when your kids are hurting, you need to be there and you need to help them through it. I think our staff does a really good job of that. Um, so, you know, that's, that's what a family's about, you know, just like your own families. That's what we do, right. You're there to, you're there to hold each other up and, it, it was in every way possible we needed each other this week. You know, it was one of those tremendous efforts that was more than just a, th a three and a half hour football game. You know, now we're going to have to find a way to, to kind of regroup here because we got, we got another one left. And, uh, you know, I'm not even going to worry about that right now. I'm going to get on this bus and fall asleep because I'm, I'm shot. And then we'll, we'll get on it. When I get back to Piscataway, we'll start thinking about how we get ready for the next one. Coach Schneider with Rivals. Coach, going into the game, you had a couple players uh, out with injury. And then during today, there was even a couple guys that fell and came back in. Would you say that that's just a matter of fatigue through eight games in eight weeks? Or is there another reason behind it? No, I think, I think we're fortunate to be where we are after eight straight weeks in the Big Ten Conference. I tip my hat to, to Coach Butler and his staff and to Dave McCune and their staff and our doctors. Uh, you know, they've done an incredible job getting them prepared for this and then keeping them going throughout the season. Um, you know, you got to imagine that was 100 and whatever it is, 23 guys on a roster. And every single guy, you know, you, you see the 74 that travel, but there's a whole bunch of others that practice every day and have ailments as well. You know, it's a physical game, not only on game day, but in practice. So uh, I just, I'm really, like I said, I'm really proud of our guys. Um, I'm proud of our guys back home that didn't get to travel, that they got us ready for this game. You know, I told them that before we left Friday. So um, I really, really, during that game, I, I was so hopeful that we could win it because I just felt like our guys deserved, I mean, who knows if we deserve to win the game. I mean, looked at the stats, but uh I just felt what they've been through this week. I was hoping that they could they could win the game. So I'm really happy for them. I'm going to take two final questions, Steve Politti and James Crouch. Hey, Greg, just along those lines, the big picture fact that you've been able to, you know, keep COVID from really impacting the team overall. I mean, the game wasn't played. Indiana Purdue wasn't played. You know, Maryland was missing several players. I mean, how difficult has that been? And, and you know, is that one of the keys to, to – this team's success? It's been really difficult, Steve. Um, our kids have made tremendous sacrifices and our, and our, our players' families have made tremendous sacrifices. I, I tip my hat to our parents because certainly they want to see their kids. And, you know, a lot of, like after our, our home games, when I'm done talking to the team, they go back down the tunnel and then they, they, visit with their parents and their parents are up in the stands and they're down behind bike racks talking to them so they don't get 
you know, that willingness to do that and the parents' willingness, you know, and, and when I, I've done several um, Zoom calls or whatever you call them with the parents, and they're they're right behind it. They're, they're so good. They're like, hey, coach, we understand. We want our kids to have this opportunity. We got you. And they've really been extremely corrupt, cooperative. Um, and look, we, as I've said many times, we've had our troubles, right? In the summer, we really had our issues. But these guys made a decision to sacrifice for one another. And that's that's the lesson, right? That's the lesson. It's not, it's that they, when you do something for, for other people, when you put them in front of yourself, you know, what can happen? So, um, as I said, I, I don't want to wear it out, but I am proud of them. Final question to James Cratch. Greg, how important was it for you guys to get Isaiah going again? It's It's been a couple of quiet weeks for him, and it seemed like he was effective in the pass game and the run game. Yeah, Isaiah is such a physical player that when, when, when we don't get him going, like you said, um, we lose out on a, on a very physical guy. And, and there's a lot of reasons for that, right? And some of them are us, some of them are him. But like you, like you mentioned, I'm really glad that he got to get rolling a little bit today. And he's the kind of back that punishes defenses. You know, most, most backs get punished. He punishes defenses. He, he runs like a linebacker. I, um, that last one down in overtime, I thought it was a horse collar. So I was just talking to him, making sure he was okay because he was down on the sideline. Next thing I know, I, I see him marching the ball off. I said, what in the heck? Um, and, you know, I argued. I didn't even see the play, so I shouldn't have argued. But I just, I just saw him get yanked down. So I said, that's a horse collar. But, um, yeah, at the end of the day, I'm just happy that, uh, that we had a couple more points than them. Thanks for the time, Coach. Thank you, fellas.